is a Fox News alert. Check your watch. Our government has now been shut down 46 hours, and still, there is no plan to get the government back to work. And tonight, President Obama and top congressional leaders meeting at the White House for the first time since the shutdown started. The president uh, reiterated uh, one more time tonight that uh, he will not negotiate. We are where we are. We're not going to play. We're through playing these little games uh, on and all is all focused on Obamacare. That's all it's about. For the latest, we go live to chief congressional correspondent Mike Emanuel. Mike. Well, hi, Greta. We understand it was an hour plus conversation at the White House. White House aides say the president was glad to get these leaders together for an important conversation. But as you heard from House Speaker John Boehner, it did not produce any breakthroughs. The president did not want to negotiate. Uh, Harry Reid says he was proud of the president, that he was very strong on the issues on the table. Uh, so bottom line, House leaders are going forward passing individual bills of areas of interest they think that have great bipartisan support. For example, tonight they passed bills to allow uh, the monuments, the museums, uh, and that's national parks to be reopened. They also passed a bill to allow medical research to go forward at the National Institutes of Health. They also passed a bill to make sure the District of Columbia government can function. Tomorrow you can expect the House of Representatives to pass bills to uh, allow veterans to get their benefits to make sure the National Guard is funded. In the coming days you can expect them to pass bills for popular programs such as the Children's Program Head Start and their hope is as Senate Democrats are asked questions about do you want veterans to get their benefits? Do you want war heroes to be able to go to the World War II memorial? That pressure will build and force these lawmakers back to the table with the President of the United States to try to hammer out a deal. They think timing is critical because, of course, we're only about two weeks out from another critical deadline when the U.S. government hits its debt limit. Greta? Mike, um, if the House is going to pass all these bills, they passed some tonight, there are going to be some tomorrow. Then they go over to the Senate. What kind of reception will they get at the Senate? And should the Senate give those bills a fine reception and vote for them, what reception will they get uh, when they get to the president's uh, desk in the Oval Office? Well, so far, Senator Reid has said no, no, no to these individual bills. The Senate Democrats' line has been, we want to fund the entire government. Uh, but bottom line, he gets asked questions about, well, don't you want to do medical research to save children with cancer? And it's a tough question to ask at a press conference. And so the Republicans in the House are hoping that that will build pressure on the Senate Democrats to either pass these bills and send them to the president or else to sit down at the table and try to find some kind of common ground to reopen the government and then with two weeks to go until the debt limit to get together and talk about that critical issue which obviously could have worldwide economic ramifications Greta. Mike thank you and tonight's meeting which the White House has described as an important conversation was a dud nothing resolved but Senator Rand Paul hoping some capital coffee talk will help we spoke with Senator Rand Paul a short time ago. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Good to be with you, Greta. All right, Senator, a lot of people trying different sorts of ideas to try to get everyone to figure out a solution for this uh, problem in Washington. And I'm curious, you have sent a dear colleague letter to uh, your colleagues suggesting maybe getting together tomorrow. What is your letter? You know, I think I'd like to, we're, we're going to have coffee tomorrow at 11 a.m. on the steps. I think really people think this is one party or the other. My understanding is the American people are frustrated with both parties not talking. And I think there's some symbolism to it. But I think we could also have coffee and talk about what is the final position that both sides would accept in order to get there. There's already rumblings of this, that there is a position that we could all come to, but it would involve negotiating. The problem I see right now is the other side keeps saying they will not negotiate. Well, how do you find compromise if you're not going to negotiate? Why won't they negotiate? Is it that they feel that they have such a strong position, they've given up so much for so long, or do they want to bloody the nose of the Republicans? You know, I'm not sure, but I think it's an untenable position because I think ultimately Americans do want us to talk to each other. They recognize we don't agree on everything, and they do want us to find a middle ground. But right now, we started out with us wanting no Obamacare and then wanting 100% of Obamacare. I think really there's going to be somewhere in the middle that we could find that fixes some of the worst parts of Obamacare, and I, I really think it all it takes is a little bit of discussion. Where is that middle ground, do you see? If you can sort of step ahead or step outside the problem. What do you think really is sort of attractive that both parties could and should agree upon now? 
You know, I think we've already hit one of them where we should have. We talked about a one-year delay to sort out some of the differences. The Democrats didn't accept that. We also talked about a delay just of the individual mandate, and they didn't accept that either. I think there's also discussion of whether or not getting rid of the medical devices tax. You know, 80 senators, including about 20 Democrat senators, voted, maybe even 30 Democrat senators voted to repeal the medical devices tax. I think that would go a long way towards getting rid of a tax we think will really hurt jobs and will really be onerous on uh, innovation in medical technology. The, one of the proposals that I understand is coming out of the Democratic side of the aisle is that, you know, vote on a clean, uh, continued resolution, and then they are willing to figure out ways to sort of tinker with Obamacare to make it what may be a better, a better bill than it, a better law than it is now in their view and your view, as well as discussing the, the tax on medical devices. I mean, it sounds like they're willing to sort of separate that discussion out, but is it that the Republicans don't trust the Democrats or you have no leverage if you get to that point? Well, see, the problem is we've had, you know, at least a year, maybe two years to fix some of these problems, and they don't bring them to Congress. They go around Congress, and the president just does what he wants to do. I think in an extra constitutional or illegal fashion, he just does what he wants to do by executive fiat. And so I'm not sure they will come to Congress. And here's the other problem. We wouldn't be here with this shutdown if Harry Reid had been passing appropriation bills. If he'd have passed all of his appropriation bills this year, you couldn't shut down anything. So people complain about, oh, these terrible people shut down government. Well, if Harry Reid had done his job and passed the appropriation bills, there would be no spending to shut down or to hold hostage. Well, things have gotten pretty rugged um, today. For instance, uh, you tweeted the president sent more security to World War II Memorial than he sent to Benghazi. Senator Durbin on the other side of the aisle said every parent knows that if you give in to a spoiled child, I guess he was referring, he's making a slap at the Republican Party, if you give everything to a spoiled child today, it will be worse tomorrow. So both sides are, uh, you know, they're taking out the knives. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't think we've completely gotten rid of politics. And we had a little fun with that tweet today, and I actually still am laughing, thinking about it. But it's kind of serious and kind of sad. There was a time during the attack in Benghazi when there were five people there protecting four people and the ambassador. There weren't many people protecting him. And today there were seven people trying to keep the World War II vets from seeing the, the monuments. And somebody did make a political decision. I promise you that someone didn't get all the employees out there putting barricades up for hundreds of yards if they didn't want to make a political statement. They're trying to blame this on Republicans. But in the end, it's just stupid to block an open monument and say, oh, you can't go look at the monument. We have thousands thousands of veterans coming here, traveling across the country, actually some being flown here, and then we're going to not let them look at the monument? Absurd, whoever made that decision. Is the fight over the debt ceiling, which is our next on our horizon, is that going to be more rugged than this battle? You know, I think all of these things should have some kind of reform associated with them. Now, the Democrats say, we won't be held at hostage and we won't negotiate. Well, the thing is, they won't negotiate when there is no deadline. And even with the deadline, they're not willing to negotiate. But to put this in perspective, this isn't just about paying interest. It isn't just about slowing down a small portion of the government, which is closed down now. It's about a government that spends a trillion dollars every year that we have to borrow. It's about a $17 trillion debt. It's about fiscal responsibility. So this is not a small matter. This has been accumulating for some time. Some of us think that the very financial structure and stability of the country depends on doing something about this debt. So we don't do this lightly just because it's for, you know, partisan reasons. I do this because I'm truly worried about the fiscal uh, stability of our country. Is there any sort of sense of friendship across the aisle right now in the Senate between the Republicans and Democrats? Is it really sort of divided? What's sort of behind the scenes? And I know people oftentimes think we in the media hate each other on other networks, but we're oftentimes friends, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, in, in private. Is it like that in the Senate? I think it's much less acrimonious than you would think. People are pitted against each other. Even sometimes the very person who might be calling you an anarchist on TV 20 minutes earlier was saying, well, how's your family doing? And was very friendly. So there's actually, I think, more rapport than you would think unless if you just watch television. I think there could be more, though. That's why I offered a year and a half ago to have a regular lunch where Republicans and Democrats came together for lunch and breakfast. I'm not, you know, Pollyanna thinking, oh, 
we're all going to be singing, you know, kumbaya and be, you know, getting everything done. But we would get more done if we had a little more interaction between the two of us. One quick last question. Any takers on your coffee for tomorrow? Uh, a few. I'm, I'm still hoping that it becomes a bipartisan coffee. We have invited every Democrat and every Republican. And really, it doesn't have to be any high-powered thing. It's sort of chatting, having some coffee, and saying, what would it take for you to reopen government? We want to, but what would it take? What is, the, what is something we could negotiate? Do you have a maybe from a Democrat? Uh, you know, some. But a, a few have said that they don't want to appear to be negotiating. and. I think that's a problem because the thing is, is I want to appear to be negotiating because that is really what the American people want us to do. They want us to talk to each other and find a middle ground. And so I hope people will show up tomorrow. It isn't a high pressure thing. We're trying to make it a one on one. Just uh, have some coffee and see if we have any ideas that might work together. Senator, thank you. Nice to see you, sir. Thanks, Greta.